Hello, thank you for joining this webinar. My name is Shahin Khan. I'm Professor of Hepatology at Imperial College London. I'm going to kick off proceedings by giving an overview of the epidemiology of cholangiocarcinoma, focusing on the importance of coding. As I'm sure you're aware, cholangiocarcinoma uh, is subdivided into three main types, depending on its anatomical location. Intrahepatic cholangiocarcinomas arise in the biliary epithelium above the second order bile ducts, whereas distal and extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma arise approximately below the cystic duct and perihyla arise in between. The importance of these three subtypes is that they are different in terms of their underlying risk factors, the relative importance of different risk factors, how they present clinically, how they're diagnosed, and also how they're managed. Interestingly, there have been studies going back over 20 years now showing that cholangiocarcinoma mortality and incidence rates seem to be increasing globally. And this is a selection of some of the studies. And um, most recently, uh, this paper from Bertuccio's group. Now, what this shows, what this study and previous studies have shown is that the general pattern appears to be that extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma is decreasing or relatively stable, whereas intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma seems to be increasing. And this figure shows um, from Berticcio's paper shows age standardized mortality rates from many countries around the UK, as well as Japan, Australia, Hong Kong, and South America, uh, and across the EU for approximately a 20 year period from the mid 90s showing that intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma mortality rates in men and women have increased significantly. The highest rates seem to be in France, Spain, the UK and Australia, with the lowest rates in Latin America. Um, and the reasons for this have never really been, uh, been explained. So I want to come now to the issue of coding of cholangiocarcinoma, or rather the, the the significant possibility that there has been miscoding of cholangiocarcinoma. So we really need to focus uh, and take a, a few moments to get our head around the International Classification of Disease or ICD coding system and how the way it's set up has an inherent problem that leads to inaccurate coding. So the ICD from the World Health Organization has a code for every disease and it's updated at regular intervals. The current version or version that's been used most recently is ICD-10, which has a code for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma and a code for extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, but does not have a separate code for perihyla cholangiocarcinoma. In parallel to ICD-10 is the ICD-O up from IARC, which is the WHO cancer subgroup, which has a morphology code for perihyla cholangiocarcinoma. And sometimes this is cross-referenced to intrahepatic and sometimes to extrahepatic. What complicates things is that ICD and ICD-O change every few years. Now, Perihyla, or so-called Klatskin cholangiocarcinoma, are anatomically extrahepatic, but not specifically differentiated in routine data. In the first version of ICD-O some years ago, perihyla cholangiocarcinoma were called Klatskin, which is technically not a term that one should be using um, internationally. But these cholangiocarcinoma were not assigned a specific histology code and were classified and, and could be classed as intra or extrahepatic. In ICD-02, Klatskin cholangiocarcinoma were given a unique histology code, but this was cross-referenced to the code for intra, not extrahepatic. And remember that ICD-10, the main IC system, still did not have a perihyla code. And the relevance of this is that perihyla cholangiocarcinoma are the largest subgroup of the three subtypes of cholangiocarcinoma as seen in clinical practice and in published case series. Now, the other complicating thing is that ICD and ICDO are taken up and used in different countries at different times. 
So for example, ICDO2, where Klatskin Klangio-Karlstein with a cross-reference to the US was taken up, adopted in 1991, but in England and Wales in 1995. And then the third version, ICDO3, again, went back to ICDO1 and cross-referenced Klatskin Klangio-Karlstein to intra or extra hepatic, so quite confusing. And again, ICDO3 was adopted in the US and the UK at different times and other countries at different times. So in summary, perihylocalangiocarcinoma, the largest subgroup of cholangiocarcinoma, may have been misclassified in all versions of ICDO, especially to intrahepatic during the period where ICDO2 was used. Now, if we look at what this shows graphically, so this is from a publication of ours in 2012. The blue line represents age standardized incidence rates of intrahepatic and the red line extrahepatic. Uh, looking at the US data from the SEER database. And what uh, happens, I'm going to show you in the next slide, what happens when ICDO3 was used instead of ICDO2 was that um, suddenly the rate switched and um, intrahepatic went down and extrahepatic went up. And this is just a graphical example of how um, poor coding itself can lead to dramatic changes in recorded incidence and mortality rates. Uh, um, uh, another bit of evidence that was recently published from our group uh, in conjunction with colleagues from Liverpool and University College London, uh, we reviewed cholangiocarcinoma uh, case notes uh, with two independent clinicians, we looked at the tumor board or MDT notes, the imaging, the clinical notes for a two year period at three independent regional hepatopancreatic ability centers. And we looked at what the diagnosis we came to was compared to the original code that was allocated years before. And in summary, what we found that the actual diagnosis for patients who were assigned Intrahepatic. So patients who were given a label of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma assigned code C221 um, in around 33% of cases, it was actually perihylo cholangiocarcinoma. So of, of a total of 625 cholangiocarcinomas, 226 were coded as intrahepatic. But on examination of the case, 43% were truly intrahepatic. 34% were actually perihyla. And when we looked at all the perihyla cases, 92% of them were coded incorrectly as intrahepatic because they don't have their own code. And neither were they coded as extrahepatic. And if we look at the, the, the figures of the official um, figures, only 1% of cholangiocarcinoma in this 12 year period were, uh, were called perihyla, which is are very much out of keeping with the clinical picture where around 50% if not more are perihyla. So therefore we need international consistency and accuracy in how we classify cholangiocarcinoma to allow accurate monitoring of disease rates. Bile ducts should be subclassified as intrahepatic, perihyla or distal. Three clear subclassifications. As I've said before, they differ in their epidemiological patterns, their pathobiology, how they present, and how they're clinically managed. And so we need to interpret historic trends with a degree of caution. We need to recall data uniformly and accurately, and the responsibility to do so lies both with clinicians as well as cancer registries. And um, reassuringly, ICD-11 and subsequent iterations of ICDO will hopefully have separate topography and morphology codes for intrahepatic perihyla and distal cholangiocarcinoma. And the fifth edition of the WHO classification gives these three distinct subclassifications. So I hope that's been a helpful introduction as to why we need uh, accurate coding and the errors that can occur if coding is um, not accurate. Thank you for listening.